Inshallah, tonight we'll be reciting from the sixth juz, we'll be reciting the whole sixth juz and the first quarter of the seventh juz. And the recitation includes the end of Surah Al Nisa, which we began yesterday. And it will begin Surah Ma'idah and we'll cover about half of Surah Ma'idah. And yesterday we spoke about a few things in Surah Nisa and we already went over the fact that how Madani Surahs and Maki Surahs all that. Surah Ma'idah is yet another Madani Surah and this Surah includes a lot of different ahkam. Starting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the Surah off with talking about the ahkam of food, the ahkam of what we're supposed to eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to talk about the, the ahkam of wudu. إِذَا قُمْتُ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ فَأَقْسِرُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ They wash your face, wash your arms. The whole process of wudu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Bani Israel in Musa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this story one more time. And this story is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how Musa and Harun, when uh, after they conquered, after they, uh, after they defeated Fir'aun, they were going back with their nation to go back to Jerusalem. And then uh, the whole story happened. And, and that story was when that the, the Bani Israel, they decided that they were too scared to go inside Jerusalem again because you know there was a, there was going to be a lot of war and fighting over there. So when when Musa and Harun and told them, you know, let's go conquer the land. If we go, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is with us. You know, فَإِنَّ غَالِبُونَ we'll, we'll be winners if we go there. You know, we'll take over the land. He said, no, you know, you take care of yourself. And then Musa said, قَالَ رَبِّي إِنِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ إِلَّا نَفْسِي وَأَخِيَ فَأَخْرَجْنَا مِنَ الْبَيْنِ الْقَوْلِ فَأَسْتَقِيمٌ He told Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, only have control over myself and my brother. You know, Musa and Harun over here. We see that they, uh, Musa Salam and Harun Salam, that they tried their best to take care of the nation, but the nation didn't listen to them. Then next, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the story of the, the sons of Adam. The story of Habil and Qabil. Very famous story how they got into a dispute and with the one brother ended up killing another brother, and that's how the chain of murder started from the very beginning. No. And then Allah Subhanahu wa continues to talk about different ahkam, the ahkam of stealing. And Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the end of the sixth juz, in Surah Ma'idah, you're going to see a lot. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, لَقَدَ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَنَسِيحُ بِنْ مَرْيَمْ لَقَدَ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى الْثَلَاثَةَ The belief of the Christians and the belief of the Jews. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he brings what the Jews and the Christians believe in, in Allah Ta'ala is the Thalatha, that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of three, three of one. And then Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes it. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مَنْ إِلَهِ إِلَّا إِلَهُ وَاحِدٍ There's only one Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala continues uh, in the, to, for the rest of the surah, mentioning a couple of different ahkam, mentioning the ahkam of Khamr al-Maysir, إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنْصَابُ رِنْسُ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ that Allah, this is the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully made wine and gambling and these things haram. The story of, uh, of, of wine is that Umar al-Dawarnu, he once came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he told the Prophet, O oh, Prophet of Allah, you know, wine, I see it makes a very big difference in the, in the, you know, in the believers. Because in the beginning of Islam, wine wasn't made haram yet. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladhin amna taqrabu salatu wa antum sukaram. Because there's a story when one of the Sahabi was leading Salah and he was intoxicated while leading, so he began making mistakes. So Umar radiallahu told the Prophet of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. However, Umar radiallahu wasn't too pleased with this ayah. You know, he said that, you know, we need a little bit more. So then the ayah came in second judge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, wa maysir, wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people may come ask the Prophet وسلم, about wine and gambling. Say that the, the harm is way more than the benefit. You know, you may think that by gambling, you know, you're going to put $5 down, you get $50 back. You may think that that's, you know, I made so much money. However, Allah SWT says that the harm is more, the harm is higher than the benefit. And then over here, Umar Allah was also not pleased. He said, you know, this is not enough. We need a little bit more. And then Allah SWT revealed the ayah, that wine and gambling, these things are all evil things. They're all haram and they are from the acts of shaitan. This is one ayah that I want to highlight today that will be in the beginning of the seventh juz in Surah Ma'idah. And I just like to say a couple of words about this ayah. Ya ayyuhal ladina amnu, la tuhadimu tayyibati ma ahallallahu lakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O oh believers, do not make haram upon yourselves the permissible things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Wa la ta'atadu, and do not cross the boundaries. What does this mean? This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the Christians in this ayah. Well, and the Christians, what they used to do is, they would leave everything, the permissible things, non-permissible things, and they would just leave everything and say, you know what, we want to be pure. 
Allah SWT says, you don't have to do that. Whatever is permissible for you, take it. However, wala ta'atidu. Don't run with it. Don't go way too far with it. This is the example of us following our desires. Allah SWT is telling us, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم. That your deen is complete. Everything is in front of you. Here's your sharia. لكل يوم مثل جعلنا منكم شرعة ومن حاجة. That you have your own sharia now. These are your rulings. This is the Quran. Everything is there for you. Follow that and do not follow your desires. This is not, the, the opposite is also true. That we must not be like those Christians who they decided to leave everything. There was a story where three Sahaba came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said that, you know, we want to become really, really pious. We want to get really close to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. One of the Sahabi was like, you know what? From today onwards, I'm going to fast every day. I'm never going to eat in the daytime. I'm going to fast every day for the rest of my life. And another one was like, okay, you're going to fast in the daytime. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend all my nights in the Hajj. I'm never going to sleep at night anymore. I'm going to spend all my nights in prayer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third person was like, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm never going to get married. I'm going to control my desires. I'm never going to get married. And the Prophet sallallahu told them, he says that I am the Prophet. You know, I'm the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm the best of the mankind. I eat, I sleep, and I get married to a woman too. It's just you don't have to know how to control it. The Prophet sallallahu said that he would fast one day and not eat one day. Prophet said that he would pray a part of the night and sleep a portion of the night. And then Prophet said, Nikah min sunnati, faman raghiman sunnati, falaysa minni. That nikah is also a part of sunnah. And whoever, and then, and then after that, the Prophet ended up saying, faman raghiban sunnati, falaysa minni. Whoever, whoever goes against my sunnah, then he hangs out from amongst us. What do we understand from this hadith in this ayah, my dear special brothers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that don't follow your desires. Don't. Fall, don't follow your desires to such a point where you leave the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet is saying that don't go so far that you leave out the things, important things you need in this dunya. So we see that we must keep a balance between our dunya and the akhirah. And this is important for us in the month of Ramadan. A lot of times when we enter the month of Ramadan, we say that, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sacrifice a lot of my sleep. You know, I'm in, at night time, I'm going to stay up all night, read as much as the Quran, in the morning time, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. We must not try to set so many high, high goals that, you know, it's going to upset ourselves at the end of the month of Ramadan. Oh, I wasn't able to pray the Hajj every single night. Instead, what we should try to do is make sustainable goals. And inshallah, tonight I'm going to get up and I'm going to pray four of God's the Hajj. Inshallah, tonight I'm going to get up and I'm going to read one quarter of the Quran. Inshallah, if we do this and we'll be able to please ourselves and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the boundaries of Sharia and within the boundaries of Islam, wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah.